Uh, comedy's changed quite a bit since I started. You know, everyone wants comedians to be uh, role models and thought leaders. You're not going to get that tonight. <laughs> I do drugs. <laughs> if you wanted educational comedy, I will get you tickets to see Hassan. Uh, just... <laughs> That's my friend. I can talk shit. That's what I do. I talk a lot of shit. I like jokes a lot. I can take jokes about me. Sometimes if I'm feeling too good about myself, I'll Google Nimesh Patel. That's who I am. And then I read YouTube comments to bring me back down to earth. And I read one the other day. It said, oh, this guy is going places. And then underneath that, someone wrote Guantanamo. That's a great joke. <laughs> Perfect word economy. It was one word. <laughs> Impeccable timing, too. It was seven minutes after the first comment. <laughs> it made me think, this guy just has two YouTube accounts. <laughs> Sitting at home like, oh, I can't wait to destroy this dude's day. <laughs> Didn't work. Yeah, I just like jokes. Okay, if, if you don't like jokes, uh, Feel free to write a letter to Columbia after this. Uh, <laughs> some of you get it, some of you don't. Uh, if you didn't understand what I meant by that, I'll tell you later. Uh, let's, what, what I want to talk about. Anyone read any uh, good manifestos lately or? That's what I'm starting with. Well, buckle up. Uh, I was reading today that 2044 is a year white people become the minority in this country. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> it used to be 2042. I guess Trump bought you guys some time. <laughs> but it feels like it's going to be a pretty scary ride at this point. Because white people are either shooting up the mall or shooting heroin. Pick one thing to be good at. You don't got to be good at everything. You know there's a heroin epidemic in this country? I'm sympathetic, I just don't understand it. Because growing up in drug education classes, heroin was the one drug when they said, don't do it, they didn't wink at the end. <laughs> Every other drug, like, don't smoke weed, kids, but see me after class. <laughs> <laughs> heroin is just crazy. It's because of, it's cause like of opioids, right? Like white people go skiing, and then they break their arms, and then they get overprescribed opioids. <laughs> And then they can't afford this shit anymore, so they got to suck some dick for diesel. It's like, yo, just stop skiing. And I've had opioids before. I had a hernia surgery last year because I thought I could do CrossFit. Turns out I can't. And, <laughs> and when you have hernia surgery, they give you like 45 Oxycontin. And yo, I never knew I had so many white friends. I was getting phone calls left and right. Hey, Nimesh, you had hernia surgery? <laughs> oh, Philip, thank you so much for calling. Yeah, I had hernia surgery. You, you got Oxycontin? <laughs> Philip. Uh, yeah, I got Oxycontin. <laughs> but I'm not going to lead you down the path to heroin addiction for free, though. You better pay the fuck up. Fuck up, look up. <laughs> <laughs> this is America. <laughs> and now, in New York, I don't know if you guys have seen this, in New York, they have billboards that say, carry naloxine, save a life. Carry naloxine, save a life. Naloxine is an antidote to a heroin overdose. You walk up to somebody, and you can spray them in the nose. They want regular citizens <laughs> to walk up to someone who's having a heroin overdose, spray them in the nose, so that they could perk back up and do more heroin. No, I'm not. My parents wanted me to be a doctor, not a paramedic. I'm not doing that shit in the slightest, man. Get oh, the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's a lot of work for a stranger. I don't talk to my girl when she's sick. <laughs> and I know, I know it's, it's uh, not sympathetic to say the things I'm saying, right? It's we should treat each other with respect and care about people who are addicted to heroin and care about addicts, but... We treat heroin way differently than the way we treated crack. I'm just, just call me an old-fashioned Reagan guy and let me be on my way. 
that's 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 more of a point than it is a joke, but I'll keep it. Uh, it feels good to say. I don't. I don't. Heroin. Look. Also, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike white people. My fiance is white. I just know the white struggle. It's mostly hangovers and avoiding carbs. I don't know what you guys are. <laughs> what are y'all doing, man? Shooting shit up. It's, and it's also, what's astonishing to me is it's usually like a middle class white kid that does some shit and the, the manifestos are always like, the system's rigged against us, we can't get jobs. I'm like, oh, what? Welcome to the world of being not white just all the time. <laughs> if a young black woman shot some shit up, I'd be like, it's about fucking time. <laughs> but white kids shoot, and I know, I know it's an unfair stereotype. I'm under... I understand that, but I'll tell you this. The next time I see some white kid with a Herschel supply bag, I'm like, hey, Cody, what you got in there? <laughs> When's the last time you were on Reddit? <laughs> I'm no longer afraid of uh, going to East New York or Compton, but I'm staying the fuck away from a cul-de-sac. Uh, I'm not afraid of Bloods or Crips or MS-13, but I am afraid of a motherfucker that is 13. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's fucking, it, it's terrifying. What, are you guys bored? Is that what it is? Are white people bored? Is that why you invented recreational axe throwing? Is that what you, <laughs> that's the only logic I can see behind that. Do you like darts but need the danger of death? <laughs> Stop going axe throwing. Someone's gonna hit you in the back of the head with an axe and next thing you know, you're addicted to Oxycontin. The whole cycle starts again. <laughs> you don't need to be doing that. I don't, I don't know. And I'll tell you this, we're never getting rid of guns. That's a fact. You can 3D print a gun now. You know that? You can 3D print a gun. It takes me four days to see my barber. But if I wanted to shoot him, I just have to hit control P once. <laughs> and I also don't think we should get rid of guns. I shot a gun recently. And yo, the hype is real. Guns are dope. My dick grew and everything. <laughs> guns are fun. I don't think anyone needs a gun, but I definitely want one. I went to get a gun. You got to get a license. And I, was, I went to the gun shop. I was like, yo, I want a gun. And the guy behind the counter was like, what are you hunting? And I was like joking, I said, uh, the most dangerous game in the world, <laughs> white people. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work. Uh, and then I was like, uh, well then, I, uh, I'm crazy and I hear voices. Like, oh, why don't you say so in the first place, man? Guns for everybody. Malls down the street. <laughs> I know that's inappropriate, but it's fun to say. I don't think I'm the first person to say, going back to the heroin thing, that <laughs> it takes bad things to happen to white people before the rest of the world starts paying attention. I don't think I'm the first person to say that. But I do think I'm the first person to say that that's why I think bad things should happen to white people first. <laughs> and then the rest of us wouldn't have to suffer so much. Like if you got Ebola today, they'd have that shit figured out tomorrow. Do you understand? <laughs> Go get Ebola. Take one for the team. Take one for the team like Jeff Epstein did. <laughs> He's a bad guy, but he took one for his fellow pedophiles, I'll tell you that much. He went out like a Japanese samurai. <laughs> he was brazen with his shit, too. It's not, he wanted to get caught, it feels like. Motherfucker had a plane named the Lolita Express. Even the guy spray painting the plane must have been like, there's no way he's getting away with his mother. <laughs> That'd be like if R. Kelly had a bus called the Jailbait Jitney. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's some wild, brazen shit. <laughs> oh, that hits you pretty hard. I like it. I blame technology. It's really technology. That's why I'd be locked your phones up, because I, I hate technology. Isn't it refreshing to not have your phone for like two hours? You know you could just do this at home, right? <laughs> you don't need an envelope. Just put your phone like over there, <laughs> exercise some willpower. 
<laughs> this is poison. We're addicted to our phones. It's like cigarettes in the 50s, you know? Like, everyone's doing it, so no one realizes it's killing us. But I guarantee you, like, 10 years from now, there's commercials like, I use to Instagram three times a day. I guarantee you, that's, uh, that's coming. <laughs> Everything's too convenient, you know? Everything you want, you can just get on demand. Entertainment on demand, dick on demand if you want it. Go outside. That's the app I'm gonna create. It's called Go Outside. <laughs> the biggest dude in your neighborhood comes to your house, knocks you out, drags you outside. <laughs> and then while you're passed out, he changes all your Netflix passwords. <laughs> Live a little. <laughs> go outside before there's no outside to go to. I was in Miami uh, three weeks ago, and sure. And <laughs> They're partying in Miami like Miami's still going to be around in 10 years. It's going under. C climate change is the biggest thing we don't talk about on, in New York. I've been in New York for 14 years. We don't talk about it enough because we're like coastal elites. We better get our shit together uh, and start talking to these clowns in the Midwest because otherwise we're not going to have a coast to be elite on pretty soon. <laughs> and these people in the Midwest better get over their shit and start talking to us or next year that gay pride parades me in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Be fracking and fucking in assless chaps pretty soon. <laughs> we gotta come together if we're gonna stay apart. That's what I'm all about. That's why I don't, we're so politically divided, that's what they say. You're either like a hyper-liberal trans person in the making or like a KKK gun-toting Jesus freak. What happened to the middle? I'm in the middle. Like, I believe in social progress, but I aspire to be a rich, evil piece of shit one of these days. <laughs> is that not the American dream? Life, liberty, pursuit of cash money, bitch. Is that not why everyone... <laughs> like, I want to be a Coke brother, but I will legalize cocaine. I feel like that's a fair trade. <laughs> I believe in social... Pro I believe in gay rights. I think women should have all the abortions they want. Even some they don't, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. I don't believe it. I want to steal land from some Native Americans. I'll give it back. I just want to read a headline that says, Indian steals land from Indians? How the fuck did it? <laughs> Stay woke, man. America's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's a weird time. It's such, a, it's such an odd time. Stay woke. Because... I, I feel like most of us are, are pretty left-leaning in this room, and the left is more politically divided than the right. Like, the right treats their crazy people like the alt-right, just like they just send them to the kids' table. At things. They're like, yeah, just go hang out in Portland for a while. I'll do whatever the fuck you're doing over there. But on the left, it's the far left that controls everything that's going on. Like, I got, they try to cancel people. I got called transphobic at a show, because I, I don't think Caitlyn Jenner's a hero. Transphobic means I'm not a big fan of trans people. I'm not transphobic in the slightest. I think Caitlyn Jenner should be allowed to piss wherever the fuck they want, but I don't think that's a hero. You gotta represent people to be a hero. You know what I mean? Like, Cricket Nimmons is a hero. You guys know who Cricket Nimmons is? No, you ignorant motherfuckers. <laughs> Cricket Nimmons was the first a black woman to undergo transgender surgery to go from being a poor black man to a poor black woman using Medicaid. It went from being a poor black man to a poor black woman, which is like the hardest thing you could do from a socioeconomic standpoint. Caitlyn Jenner went from being a rich old white dude to an old rich white lady. That's a lateral move. <laughs> went from being the first easiest thing you could be in this country to the second easiest thing you could be in this country. And the third easiest thing, obviously, is an old white lady's dog, but that's... <laughs> they don't have the science for that shit yet. Quite, I, don't even think, I don't even think Bruce really felt like a woman. I think Bruce caused a car accident which he killed an old white lady. That's true. And the judge was like, look, Bruce, I can't send you to jail because they'll tear your ass up, but... You took an old white lady out, so you're gonna bring one back. And... 
<laughs> uh, you look like you didn't want to laugh at that, but you did. I bet you didn't think that this was how this was going to go. Indian guy, Indian face, probably going to talk some Indian shit. No, no, I have some thoughts, motherfuckers. Let's... <laughs> trying to shift the culture. There's a, it's a weird time being an Indian person in entertainment at the moment. There's this thing happening in Hollywood called a brown wave. Because a few Indian people are popping off. That's what they're calling it. A brown wave. Which is something so gross to call something so cool. <laughs> brown wave. Because a few of us are doing alright. A few Indian people are doing well, you know? It's like Hassan, Mindy, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Elizabeth Pocahontas Warren. <laughs> Don't fucking groan at Pocahontas. That's a fine nickname. She pretended to be Native American. Why is that? No one brings that up. But if you instantly say Pocahontas, like, how dare you? Yo, if I pretended to be Chinese and you call me Mulan, I'd be like, fair point. Like, <laughs> okay. But yeah, there's this push for diversity in entertainment now. I mean, we got to get diversity on entertainment. But I don't think it's out of the kindness of, of white executive hearts. I think white executives just realize, oh, shit, brown people and Asian people also watch things. Like, after Crazy Rich Asians happened, everyone was like, oh, my God, can you believe it? Asians like movies? <laughs> quick, quick, find us an Indian that can sing the Beatles. <laughs> So stupid, man. <laughs> Hollywood's full of shit. But I went, I went to Los Angeles. <laughs> Try to ride this white guilt to the top. Let's see. <laughs> I went to pitch a television show called Patel's Liquors. Can you guess what it's about? <laughs> it's about me running a liquor store after failing at chasing a dream. So it's either gonna be a very funny sitcom or a reality show. <laughs> 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 we'll see. <laughs> and I, for the, I am a Patel, if you guys don't know for the record. I know there's a few of you in the room. Uh, people always ask growing up, hey, why are there so many Patels? Why are there so many Patels? We be smashing. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> we enjoy sex and we do it frequently. <laughs> Trying to bring that number 2044 back to 2042 as fast as possible. <laughs> I told a friend, I was like, yo, I'm pitching a television show called Patel's Liquors. And he was like, oh, why? You want to perpetuate the stereotype that Indians are just like a poo? It's like, that dude is no longer my friend. Uh, <laughs> but it's such a weird, it's a stereotype. I, my dad had a liquor store. I, it's a reality. It was an odd way. He landed when he was 17 in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, back then, they called Newark Brick City because if you looked at someone wrong, they'd hit you with a brick. And, and then he opened a store in a very bad neighborhood of Irvington, New Jersey. If you don't know Irvington, it's terrible. On one side of Irvington, they have the Bloods, and the other side of Irvington, they had the Crips. And the only thing they had in common is that they'd both try to rob my father. <laughs> uh, outside of that, it was a pretty interesting way to grow up. It's like, my parents didn't know it was not okay to send me to school with liquor store merchandise. Like, I would go to school with, like, Budweiser t-shirts. I had a Bacardi rum backpack. On my 12th birthday, I got a Corona bicycle. I don't know why Corona made a bike. I guess, like, if you lost your license, but you still need to get to work. <laughs> Corona had your back. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a crazy way to grow up. You get a lot of perspective that way. That's what I think, I feel like a lot of people in America are lacking perspective. You have to go through things to learn to laugh at life. Like my dad's been shot at. So words, that's why I enjoy jokes so much because words can't really hurt. My dad's been shot at. Racism can't hurt me. One night I was out, some guy yells out, go eat some curry. I was like, why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> really hurt my feelings there, Steve. <laughs> 
just got to learn to laugh at life. You got to roll with the punches. And my dad's store was in a very poor neighborhood, and he got along with everybody, and everybody was always, like, smiling and laughing and shit. Like, we had a guy in the store named uh, Big Sugar. And we named him Big Sugar because he would come in and eat all the Kit Kats. <laughs> and then one day he lost his foot to diabetes. And he came in walking with a limp. And all we did was change his name to Sweet and Low and just kept on rolling. <laughs> That's my favorite joke. Thank you. I uh, enjoy it very much. Such a, such a strange time. Weird time being an Indian person in general. Because it doesn't feel like uh, people know how to be racist towards us correctly. <laughs> I was walking around the corner like not two weeks ago and I was with my friend Asif and this white guy walks past us and he just goes, look at these two computers. And I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't even know how to process that one. <laughs> I gotta get one pun in, you know. It's, That happened, I swear to God. But Indians, we can take racism. We can take it quite well, because we'll also take your jobs. You know, that's a fair trade. Uh, that's probably the biggest, slickest thing Trump has done, is convince the entire country that Mexicans stole all the jobs. No, they didn't. Indians stole all the jobs. I got a bunch of cousins on H-1B visas right now. Like, yeah, keep blaming the Mexicans. <laughs> Stop snitching, Nimesh. <laughs> and Indians are also quite racist. Let's not ignore the fact that we're not good people. <laughs> we are. We're racist as shit. It's, uh, you ever listen to an old Indian uncle who happens to be a doctor talk to you about like why other people like, oh, these people can't make it in this country. We did it. Why can't they do it? It's like, well, you couldn't make it in India. <laughs> So why the fuck you can't buy <laughs> Indians are most, most racist in like very subtle ways. Let me ask this question, white people, since most of you seem to be here. Uh, have any of you ever gotten a bad coffee at Dunkin' Donuts? Because I haven't. <laughs> I suppose that's a regional joke. Here in the Northeast, uh, the majority of Dunkin' Donuts are run and operated by Indian people. And I'll tell you a little secret. Underneath the counter at every Dunkin' Donuts, there's a little button that uh, alerts the staff that a white person wants some coffee. Uh, and we got a little Philip on the premises. Now he's going to want a French vanilla, but you're going to give him a decaf hazelnut. <laughs> Life is about small victories. It's such, a, such an odd time to be an Indian person. You know what I saw that day? I saw an Indian police officer. That shit blew my mind. I had the same reaction seeing an Indian cop as the one I have a white lady Uber driver. Like, no disrespect, but what happened? You know? <laughs> it's odd. Indians and cops don't really have problems, which is odd to me, because I wear hoodies and sell loose cigarettes like all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm due for a tasing. The worst that happens to me is sometimes I'll get pulled off a train because I carry a backpack. And the other day, a cop pulls me off the train and makes me open up my backpack. And it's like, why do you have a pressure cooker? <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, I like rice, man. What? How are you going to be racist and not racist at the same time? <laughs> I don't know what the solution to cops is in this country. I feel like maybe black and white people need to both stop being cops and let Indians handle that shit. Because we'll tase y'all equally. Or at the very least, try some nonviolent Mahatma Gandhi shit. Like, hey, get your hand out your pockets or I will not eat for three days. <laughs> oh, man. Such an odd time. I feel like we'll be fully assimilated in this culture when we get our own porn stars. That's when I feel like we'll... Like, there's female Indian porn stars, but there's no dude. You know what I mean, like, every other race has a guy. Like, white people have James Dean. Black people have Wesley Pipes, a great guy, does great work. You should check it out. 
Indians, we can't get like one deep dick Patel. That's a real... <laughs> deep dick Patel is a real Indian name. I knew two deep dicks and a hard dick in high school. <laughs> and they're all accountants now. And I just want to call one of them up like, hey, hard dick, I got this movie idea. It's called Come Dog Millionaire. You down to it? <laughs> That's my stupidest joke. But... <laughs> Come dog millionaire. It's because of that stereotype, right? The like Indian dudes don't have big dicks. Which, first of all, that's not what your mama said last night. <laughs> and second of all, that can't be true, right? There's 500 million Indian dudes on this planet. You can't find one with eight inches. That's all you need from the research I've done. If you Google what women want, right underneath equal pay is eight inch dick. I just, <laughs> I'll concede it's a bit rarer to find an Indian guy that's doing, willing to do porn if he has an eight inch dick. Cause the stereotype hits the brain and makes you think, oh shit, maybe if I have a big old dick, I'm pretty special. Like a white guy, a black guy wakes up with an eight inch dick. He's like, I guess I'll do porn. <laughs> but an Indian guy wakes up with an eight inch dick. He's like, son. I can do anything. <laughs> and that's the story of how I started stand-up comedy. <laughs> that's not true at all. If I had an eight-inch dick, I'd definitely do porn. Be Nimesh Patel in Punjabi Punani. <laughs> oh, boy. Indians. I mean, Indian, we're Indian people, we're pretty much white. <laughs> we are. I mean, there's a huge subset that isn't doing as well as they should be or could be doing, and I feel, I feel for them. But for the majority of us, we're like the richest minority. Like, we're, we're pretty much white, and we can be doctors, scientists, engineers, until something terroristy happens. And then we all got to shave and put on our American flag T-shirts. <laughs> We're pretty much white, except when it comes to dating. Like, Indian dudes are never really sexualized, you know? No woman's at home getting ready thinking, ooh, girl, I'm gonna snag me a Sanjay tonight. That never, uh, and that never happens. Like, and we just started getting into the culture of being, like, cool to date. Like, white women just started fucking with Indian dudes, and black women still don't. Like, black women, like, they don't fuck with Indian dudes, but they want our mom's hair, which I feel like is... <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, I feel like... I don't know. <laughs> I'm, like I said, my, my fiance is white. I'm in an interracial relationship, and it's an odd time to be in an interracial relationship because it feels like when... Obama was president, everybody was like, yo, love is love. Love whoever you want, it's all good. But now that Trump is president, it feels like everyone's like, hey man, you gotta stick together, you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> you gotta be with an Indian woman to make Indian babies, you have Indian soldiers for when this war pops off. <laughs> what? And I get it from Indian women too, it feels like when I'm walking down the street, my white ass girlfriend, it feels like Indian women are looking at me like, I'm gonna tell your mother. <laughs> And it feels like Indian dudes are looking at you like, hey, man, how'd you do it? <laughs> I told her I was Puerto Rican. She, she don't know. She thinks my name is Luis Diaz. <laughs> That's the most Puerto Rican name I could think of. But it's... It's because... Like, any women don't really fuck with aspirational guys. And that's a, a statement of fact. And they shouldn't. No one should really fuck with someone who's not in their same bucket of tax. Like, when I, like when I started comedy, I didn't really have shit. So whenever I met an Indian girl, it would just be like, what do you do? Like, I remember I was on a date with an Indian woman when I started comedy, and I was like, yeah, I'm trying to do comedy. It's tough, but it's fun. But a girl across the table was like, yeah, I'm a surgeon. I'm like, yeah, this ain't gonna work. 
But uh, thank you for dinner, Priya. <laughs> <clears throat> such a such a weird time. Yeah. My fiance is white, like I said. And I, I found out recently that her um, her parents voted for Trump. That's my out if I need one. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, your parents voted for Trump. That was two years ago. I never forgot that shit. <laughs> but it's fine. They're good people. It just makes me question the narrative that we've all come to believe in this country that every Trump voter is a racist. Word? How racist could they be if they let me do what I do? <laughs> I don't know, but next time we fuck, I'm putting my thing in her butt for Allah. That's for goddamn sure. <laughs> One for Allah, two for the Mexicans. Three is too many fingers to put in the butt. I learned that. <laughs> uh, Trump, Trump, Trump. Politics is, is crazy right now. Politics has reached a level. I used to work at SNL on Weekend Update, and I quit studying politics because that show made me lose my mind. But it's also insane how uh, jaded we are as a country now when it comes to politics. Like three months ago, some guy lit himself on fire in front of the White House. And we were just like, yeah, that makes sense. Trump is president. It's all <laughs> and I would have just let it roll off my shoulders too, but it was an Indian guy. 33 years old, name was Arnav Gupta from Maryland, lit himself on fire in front of the White House because he was high on K2. Spice. K2. The motherfucker was high on spice, the whitest drug known to man. <laughs> That's, th that, you got to take triumph from tragedy somehow. That's what I took from it. That's how far we've come as a people, that Indian people are dying from spice. Meanwhile, white people I was spending $8 on turmeric lattes. Can you believe this shit? <laughs> Let me tell you something, white people. Turmeric is $3 a pound. <laughs> it makes me want to open up my own Starbucks and just call it Mom's Kitchen. And then we misspell your names. <laughs> What's your name, Charles? Oh, J A. <laughs> Eight dollar turmeric lattes. You believe that shit? That's why I don't think Americans deserve health care. Because we're idiots when it comes to prices. We'll just pay whatever the fuck we want because we think it's worth it. If someone tells us, hey, but I guess it's worth eight dollars. I don't know. I know I don't deserve health care. Two weeks ago, I was in Houston and uh, I went to a breakfast spot and they had uh, fried chicken, hot honey, maple butter, and waffles on the menu for $12, and I got it. That, that's not a breakfast. That's something you get on death row. <laughs> and even if you got it, the warden be like, hey man, you gotta watch your cholesterol. You can't be eating like this. But we don't, we don't deserve healthcare. Deserve is a very strong word. We, des we need it, but we don't deserve it. A few weeks ago, a few, two months ago, I found out exactly how much weed someone needs to smoke to have an asthma attack. I had an asthma attack. <laughs> I went to a Travis Scott concert, and I smoked four blunts in one hour, and then, and then that song, Stop Trying to Be God, came on, and I was like, you're right, Travis, I have to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and I called an Uber to the hospital, because an ambulance is $600, and I'm not gonna die a sucker. <laughs> I'll tip an Uber driver, run some lights. And I get to the hospital, I'm in and out in 20 minutes. I've had, I know exactly what the procedure is. Like, yo, give me albuterol, I'll be gone. 20 minutes. I got the bill. $6,000. I had another asthma attack. $6,000? I'm not gonna pay it. You know you can just do that, right? Yo, you can just call the, I called the hospital. I was like, yo, I don't have $6,000. They're like, how much you got? I was like, is this the mob? I don't have any money. They were like, okay. I was like, word? <laughs> That's, I'm either the greatest haggler in the world or that shit was not worth $6,000.
And I know I'm not the greatest haggler in the world because that person that bought the $8 turmeric latte was me. Uh, <laughs> I miss my mom's cooking. <laughs> fucking tragic, man. You think uh, Trump wins again? Yes, maybe. <laughs> the, yeah. When a white man says yes, that affirmatively, he's right. <laughs> I do too. For those of you that don't think he's going to win again, remember, the worst movies get sequels. <laughs> Honey Boo Boo lasted four seasons. I don't want him to win again, but it's not looking good because everyone is a herb on the other side. If you don't know what a herb is, I can't really explain it. It's just a 90s term for someone that's a herb. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You, you just see it and you know, oh, that guy is a fucking herb. Everyone's too old. Then why, why is that not... We should all just come together on climate change and stopping old people from doing shit. You can't, you can't run for president if you can't walk the stairs at some point in your life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like when my Uber driver's over 55. You ever get an Uber and the driver's some 70-year-old white lady talking about her grandkids? I'm like, you missed every turn, Karen. I do not give a sh... I don't give a shit about Tanner. <laughs> Tell them to stay away from heroin, all right? And just keep going. It's too old. But I mean, I do appreciate the fact that we're very politically active now. That's pretty cool. Women are marching now. Thank you guys for doing that. I feel like you could be doing more, but that's just my opinion as a man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not politically active in the slightest. That's not true. The closer I get to political activism, uh, I, like if I'm flying somewhere, I won't shave before I fly. <laughs> I flew to North Carolina four days after the election in 2016 and had a full beard at the time, and so I decided I would upgrade my seat to the first seat in first class just so I was the first person anybody saw. <laughs> just me in the front row with a smirk reading the Quran, like, hey, what's going on, guys? Good to see you. It's a good book right here, man. Muhammad, see, Muhammad seems pretty cool. And some guy on the plane was like, hey, man, it reads the other way. I was like, you're right, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> the closest I get to political activism is I'll fat shame Donald Trump every morning on Twitter. Every morning I remind Donald Trump that his BMI is not normal. Like, hey, Donnie, what'd you have for breakfast? All of it? You know, that kind of goofy shit. <laughs> and the fun part is when you talk shit to the president of the United States, his followers will talk shit back to you. And they're not exactly professional comedians. <laughs> Whereas I am a professional comedian <laughs> with nothing better to do all day than ruin some white lady from Kansas's day. <laughs> some lady read my profile the other day uh, after I talked some shit to Donnie, and she said, and my profile says Nimesh Patel, and she said, go back to Iraq. <laughs> Which in like 2002 would have been a decent insult, right? Like 9-11 was still hot, white people, white people didn't know what to call brown people, they just grouped us all together. But it's 2019, you could research and really hone your racism. <laughs> look up where there's a concentration of Indian people. If she was like, go back to Edison, New Jersey, like, oh, this bitch is onto something. <laughs> Step your game up. But I read her profile, and it's a white lady with a picture of her son, two-year-old kid. That profile says, conservative Christian mom. It's like, that's too much information, Michelle. <laughs> How do I ruin Michelle's day and combine all this information in 160 characters? That's a word problem I gave to myself. <laughs> Conservative Christian mom. I wrote back, I'm going to pray to Allah <laughs> that your son is gay. And <laughs> I'm not proud of that, but it had to be done. I am a little proud of it. I'm not Muslim. It's just fun to fuck with people 
and use that as the thing because people are so ignorant about it. Anyone here religious? No. I was I went to an election party in 2016 in a room full of just like this, a bunch of fucking atheists. Yo, I've never seen a group of atheists pray harder in my life. Uh, and Donald Trump at the end of the night was, where's your Jesus now, motherfucker? You're not religious, huh? Interesting. I'm studying religion at the moment. I'm studying Christianity because I feel like we're all going to be forced to learn about it pretty soon. So. <laughs> Getting a head start. So far, I've learned that Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph, even though Mary and Joseph never had sex. And Joseph was just cool with that. <laughs> Seems like a pretty chill dude. Because I know if me and my girl never had sex and then she had a baby, I'd be at least curious. <laughs> at least three pages of my Bible would read. And then Nemesh asked Mary some questions. <laughs> Question number one, where the fuck you get this black baby? <laughs> oh, boy. I, I think religion is a bit of a scam. If I'm being honest. You know, uh, the Catholic Church owns the most real estate in New York City, outside of NYU. The Catholic Church owns the most property. What? They just own mad property? Like, the Jehovah's Witnesses in Brooklyn sold a building for $300 million. And it feels like they just did it so they could have more doors to knock on once those apartments went up. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of Ponzi scheme situation. That's probably why the Catholic Church owns all those buildings, so they could move their molested priests around and not have any, oh, now you're religious all of a sudden. <laughs> Full of shit. I'm, I'm Hindu, so you're all welcome for yoga. That's a Hindu thing. I don't know if you know that or not. That's the greatest accomplishment Hindus have achieved in this country. We've convinced young white women that yoga is a real thing. <laughs> It's not a real thing. Yoga was invented in India when a dog was bent over and two Indian dudes walked by and they're like, you know who look really good doing that? <laughs> Becky. And then they, uh, <laughs> they flew to America, ran up to the first young white woman they saw. Like, here, put on these tight pants and bend over. It's good for you. <laughs> Yoga. Good job, guys. We did it, man. My girl don't like that joke. Because she does yoga. <laughs> What's that? No. <laughs> but thank you for that interruption. My girl and I, we just got back from, uh, you gotta travel when you're in a relationship to keep things cool. My girl and I, we just got back from safari, which is quite possibly the whitest thing I've ever done. <laughs> we saw all sorts of animals, it was fucking beautiful. The craziest shit we saw was a bunch of giraffes fighting. Giraffes, you know how they fight? They bang their necks together. <laughs> they bang their necks together mad slow like a bunch of drunk white ladies. <laughs> And then behind them are other giraffes yelling, world stars. <laughs> Shit was dope. It was amazing. I saw so many species of white people. It was fantastic. German white people, Australian white people. I saw a white guy with a Make America Great Again hat. I shot him. Uh, <laughs> I told you I was hunting. <laughs> I gotta stop saying she's my girl. She is my fiance. We got engaged uh, six months, eight months ago. Sure, thank you, yeah. She's happy about it. Uh, I'm coming to terms with it. No, I'm kidding, she's great, I love her. But I had to, I had to buy a diamond ring, which is the stupidest financial decision I've ever made. And that's coming from a guy wearing $300 sneakers. Do you understand, like I make a lot I make a lot of bad decisions, and the diamond was quite possibly the stupidest. Just because there's no return on that investment. Some women are like, but she, you get her, but she gets me and a diamond? That don't seem fair. 
Where do diamonds come up in the equal pay feminism conversation? Oh, y'all don't bring that up at the meeting? I'm pro women's rights in every single way, but I go to every women's march with a sign that says, what about diamonds? The... What the fuck about diamonds? Because we don't get shit in return for real. I asked the crowd that night, what do, what do guys get in return for buying a diamond for their lady? A watch, sure, if your girl is rich, but, but, but some lady yelled out, anal. <laughs> Let me tell you something, there's no anal worth $20,000. She could fuck my ass for half that shit. Y'all together? Just hanging and banging or? Uh, hanging and banging is a new phrase I'm trying to start. In 2019, I got it from my good friend, John. Well, fuck Netflix and chill. We hanging and banging, that's what we're doing. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, well, I can't ask you these questions. I've been with my girl for five years now, so we fight in public, that's all that means. <laughs> we had our oddest fight the other night. Uh, I drink a lot, and I came home and I found out that there's two ways to close a door <laughs> as a man. You know, this is a regular, just close it, like you've been taught your whole life. And then there's another way where if you live with your girl and you come home late and she's sleeping, you gotta uh, turn the doorknob. <laughs> push it into the frame and then release it so it doesn't make a noise or your relationship might end. Did you know that? Did I tell you my girl's white? If it wasn't clear already, that, that's a white problem. <laughs> but I love her, I, obviously. I've been with her for a very long time. I, f I knew I loved it when um, I had to buy her tampons. That's when I... I look for jokes in every situation, okay? And she was like, yo, just had my period. And I was like, you want me to go with your tampons? And she said, no, you don't have to. And I said, no, I'm a comedian. I can sense when a joke is going to come <laughs> from an experience I've never had before. I said, what kind of tampons do you want? She says, regular. Sounds simple. <laughs> go downstairs at the pharmacy. I see regular, super, and super plus. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> it's like, regular? My girl deserves the best. <laughs> Super plus it is. Come to find out, tampons, not like gasoline. Did you know that? <laughs> and regular and Super Plus are the same price. I'm like, CVS, I know a deal when I see one. I bought 48 Super Plus. Anybody need tampons? Selling loose tampons. <laughs> oh man. You know the difference? You do. Who you bought tampons for? <laughs> it wasn't her. How long you been not seeing each other? <laughs> oh, you met oh oh. Right, 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 right. They told me that earlier. Well, look, if you, if you, if you ever want to, like, broach the conversation of, hey, maybe we should be hanging out in, like, a sexual way, uh, pay a comedian $20 before he goes on stage. <laughs> and then in your Uber ride home, be like, remember when that Indian guy was... Uh, I'll take that $20 later, man. <laughs> <laughs> People ask, like, hey, do you miss being single now that you've been in a relationship for so long? And the short answer is not really. I miss dating from time to time just because you learn shit on like one night stands. That's how I found out I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> I hooked up with a girl once and then the next morning I woke up, my eyes itched, I couldn't breathe. I was like, what STD is this? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it was mittens. <laughs> I also just miss talking to people. Because when you get in a relationship, you have to eliminate 50% of the human population as people to talk to. And I just, I just enjoyed going out and like talking to people because I never had a fear of rejection. I remember I went up to a girl once. I said, hey, where are you from? And she said, over there. And then she went over there. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. Name is the worst drug there is. And I can see why people chase it, but don't do it. But it, fame is such a drug that people will drop sex tapes if they can't get it any other way. That's like the sucking dick uh, for crack equivalent of <laughs> fame. People will drop a sex tape. And like, I mean, I might. <laughs> if this comedy shit don't go the way I need it to. My sex tape will be me fucking a gay black man wearing a Columbia University sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nimesh. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, enjoy the rest of the night. That's the show. Um, all right, cool. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Bye.